great. But I made this hat to be more thought. So it would be a bit more like art if I made this hat. <laughs> you know, I wasn't actually there when it first started. I glimpsed it happening from a distance and I waved to them from the other side of the field. But I was actually walking in the opposite direction. Sardines may also refer to a derivative of the children's game Hide and Seek, in which only one person hides and the others must find them, hiding with them when they do so. The hiding places become progressively more cramped, like sardines in a tin. The last person to find the hiding group is the loser. It's an uncomfortable thing to acknowledge the exclusionary nature of your friendship groups and to recognise your role in it. It's even more uncomfortable to admit that you have no real desire for this to be any different. January. I run across campus in tears. At the cannery, the sardines are washed, their heads are removed, and the fish are then smoked or cooked, either by deep frying or by steam cooking, after which they are dried. It's February. Sitting on the bench seats along the front wall of the pub, we lean our heads against each other's shoulders. Something is beginning to happen. It's May, and it feels as though we are almost literally holding each other up. If two people were to collapse at the same time, would the weight of each of their bodies hold the other in balance, like two planks of wood propped together? I don't know how to talk about the role of our shared losses in the formation of our friendships. I wish so much that we hadn't had to have those losses, but I'm also endlessly grateful for the friendships that might never have existed without them. It's June, and I'm sitting on the floor of a toilet cubicle on the ground floor of the library, sobbing and vomiting. I stay there for an hour and a half, then go home without telling anyone. It's July or August maybe, I've lost track of the number of leaving drinks I've been to as our friends leave the city or even the country. Some do so by choice, but many others do not. We feel their absences in the pub and in our conversations with one another. It's December and there is a party that I am not invited to. My relationship with social media becomes increasingly toxic as I lie in bed and watch my friends' Instagram stories and see that they are together on this night and on many others. We often joke about FOMO, but the fear of becoming peripheral to my friendship groups is overwhelming. It's January, I'm walking home alone in the early hours of the morning. I'm restless with a weird emptiness in the pit of my stomach and I try to trace the source of the feeling. I recognise that it feels like I'm missing somebody, but I can't work out who. It's not until the next morning, when I wake up and go on my phone and see the things that others have shared on social media, that I realise what the date is and why it's significant. It's been a year to the day and I feel guilty for not realising it sooner. I worry that I have not been grieving in the right way, that I have grieved too little or too much, or that I did not deserve to grieve as I did. It's January, we're in a living room in Lewisham. Despite the lateness of the hour and the fact that we are very drunk, or perhaps because of these things, we are trying to have a serious conversation about art. I've spent months since trying to remember his exact words, but I still can't separate what he said from what I was thinking while he said it. I think that this is because they were very similar, or at least that their sentiments were. We got to have Mark, and now we don't have Mark anymore, but we did, and because of that it feels as though somehow we owe it to him and to everyone who didn't get to have him in their lives as we did, to at least try and do something. It's easy to feel stupid for being idealistic, but I think it's also important to recognise the virtues of blind optimism. Without the belief that an alternative really is possible, how will we motivate ourselves to do anything? Because they are low in the food chain, sardines are very low in contaminants such as mercury relative to other fish commonly eaten by humans. It's May in a basement club in South East London. Sweat runs down the walls. Someone grabs my hand and pulls me up onto the platform where they are dancing and for a few seconds I do not doubt that I belong here. It's late spring and we're planning our escapes. A year has passed and we're starting to stagnate. We know that summer will not be endless. Some of us plan to go south for the winter. Good quality sardines should have the head and gills removed before packing. They may also be eviscerated before packing. If not, they should be purged of undigested or partially digested food or feces by holding the live fish in a tank long enough for them to empty their digestive systems. It's July. How do you make sense of a moment that you are still inside of? It's July. We know that summer will not be endless.